Hey guys, thanks for joining me for the third installment in this Bible series, or this video series, and addressing, in the first two videos, you know, we're, we're addressing these, these issues, these claims people are making. We want to address them with Scripture openly, because that's what we're supposed to do. And the very first Scripture we're going to cover tells us, tells you exactly why we're doing this. The first video we covered modern day apostles, and the second one modern day prophets, and this one we're going to cover the prophetic word. And you see a lot of people put this in their video title, Prophetic Word. Well, most of the time, those same people, if you go in their video description, have links for you to donate. They're, they're trying to make money. Now, I don't know what's in their heart. I can't say that's their main focus. But, you know, this day and age, it, it seems to me like it would be much more sensible to not try to make money on it. But, again, you don't know what people's driving force is. The Bible does have a lot to say about that, though. So... Let's get into what this is. A prophetic word. What is a prophetic word? Well, a prophetic word would be a, a statement or a series of statements, basically, that would be prophetic in nature. They're basically indicating future events or future situations or future statuses of a people's places or things. That's the basic definition. So a prophetic word would have to tell you something that hasn't happened yet and be accurate. If, we, if you watch the video where we talked about the modern day prophets, how their word, their word isn't coming true. We had a whole bunch of them try to do this with Trump getting reelected. Only one ever apologized, and even then he still tried to cover his behind by saying that it, just because he was wrong, it didn't make him a false prophet. Well, you made a prophecy. So if you give a prophetic word, you're making a prophecy. You can't try to hide behind, no, no, it's just a prophetic word, it just has prophetic implications, no, it, it, you still made a prophetic statement, if it doesn't come true, that makes you a false prophet, this is scripture talking, not me, scripture says this, if it doesn't come true, don't fear that, plus don't even listen to them, in fact, back in the day, y'all better be glad it ate 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, and even beyond that, they would put them to death, in fact, as, as early as a thousand years ago, they put people to death for having, you know, giving false prophecies. So this is not, isn't something to take lightly, but I see people cast these terms around cavalierly like it's nothing. You're responsible for these things that you say when you're trying to represent God. When you're representing him, you, you're responsible for what you're saying. You're responsible for what you're telling people. That's why it behooves you to be as biblically accurate as you possibly can. This involves reading the Bible and studying the Word, not just copying what other people do. So it's important for us to make sure that what we're, the path we're walking is as accurate and as on point as we possibly can, and what we're giving is as accurate and on point as we possibly can. Let's step into, just for a minute, let's step into the rapture debate. We have pre mid and post, uh, pre pre something something after you know two times flipping the clock around all kinds of weird stuff people coming up with every form of this doctrine as they can read the bible the bible says there is a time frame coming that is dedicated to one purpose and one purpose only it is God pouring his wrath out on this earth and the people who dwell on it and he's going to use that to turn his people back to him they're going to be refined through the fire. Nowhere in there does it have anything to do or say anything or involve the church whatsoever. The church is a different group of people. It's, a, it's the grace dispensation. And when that happens, the rapture happens, that's the end of grace. Well, you notice the, the grace isn't being shown after, in, during the tribulation time, for, time period. It doesn't talk about that. But see, when we make a statement that, that settles with us well and don't investigate the other claims we, we come up with a false thing i did a whole video just reading through the book of revelation hitting the key points with the and we were pretending we had the we we believe it's post trip so we're going to see where we at and you if you watch that video you notice when we got to the end there was no place for a rapture there was no rapture spoken of there was no rapture mentioned there wasn't even one hinted at yet i can go to ecclesiastes 12 and see a rapture hinted at it, it wasn't mentioned there the, the the debate has to be based in biblical fact, but we can't take scripture out of context to prove it. We have to prove these things. And that's what we're going to do today about the prophetic word. What is a prophetic word and should people be using this? So we'll start with 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. What we're doing today in this video is all of those things. 
it, it falls to me to train me and correct me and reprove me as well as anybody who's doing this and they're in the wrong place doing it. Because what's in your heart concerning this makes a big difference. Now here's Second Peter makes an interesting statement. Second Peter 1, 19 through 21. And we have something more sure, the, the prophetic word to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of people will use the, sec the last part of that verse, or verses, to try to prove I'm being carried along by the Holy Spirit. That's why I'm coming up with this, okay? But explain why you were wrong when you made a statement that was a prophetic word and it didn't come true. See, we get too caught up in the in the explanation, trying to explain it away, and not stopping them and bringing them back. Okay, but again, you were wrong. Explain to me why you were wrong and what that says about you, because the Bible has an interesting statement about that. In fact, it has multiple. We've covered this. Covered it in the last video. So it's important to keep people on track on things. Because people don't want to have to face that. And this is where you can expose somebody. You can expose what they're doing. You take a, let's go back to the rapture debate again. I, I watch rapture, rapture debates. And when you get a pre and a post, and what you'll see is the pre is pretty level in his description. He's secure in what he believes, and he's got the word of God to back it up. And, and they say, well, they just use a few scriptures. No, no, we use a lot, <laughs> a whole lot, hundreds. But then the post trip guy usually gets up there and starts slinging mud or gets very exasperated or desperately tries to get everything out he possibly can in five minutes. We don't have to do that. All we got to do is read the scripture. The scripture, nowhere does the scripture hint at a deliverance after the tribulation. You read the book of Revelation, there is no rapture per presented at the end. You think that if it was there, the, the book of Revelation would mention it when you read down to the last couple of chapters and get to the end and then the last events. But nowhere in those last couple of chapters does it mention it. Nowhere. It doesn't even begin to mention it. It mentions the people that weren't in the age of grace. See, people forget that those that are in the church, it's not the people before Jesus. The grace age from Jesus to now, that's the age of grace. The people that died in Christ before that, different group of people. The Bible clearly explains this in multiple scriptures. So you got to be able to figure out who's who. That they keep making the tribulation saints, the rapture people, but that's not them because that's a different group of people. So it's easy to 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 see somebody who's reading the Bible and going, okay, well that makes sense, and they follow through with that. And when they get into a debate, that they, they carry themselves a certain way. People who don't have a decent argument usually carry themselves much different. And I've just I was watching through a few videos today of people talking about the rapture. And they, they're bad about the name calling and talking down about it. That's your brothers and sisters. Look, you want to believe in post-trip? Fine. I think you're wrong. We're allowed to do that. But I don't hate you because you believe in it. I'm not going to call you names because you believe in it. And that's the problem we're running into. And to me, that's a big red flag on where somebody's state is. They got a lot of hatred on the subject, and they want to shine that onto brothers and sisters of Christ. Because we are specifically called not to hate on brothers and sisters. Instead, we help each other understand more and grow. So, back to 2 Peter 1, 19-21. And we have something more sure. The prophetic word. Not a prophetic word. The prophetic word. Key things in the wording the Bible uses tells us what we need to know. He's specifically referencing this Bible. Of course, at that time, the New Testament didn't exist. But he's referencing the scriptures inspired by God as the prophetic word. No people, just that. Second Peter 3.16 As he does in all his letters when he speaks in them of these matters, there are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. How interesting that's there because he's talking about Paul. And that's pretty interesting because that particular one can relate to the rapture one too. But notice it doesn't say anything about a prophetic word. 
Yet amazingly enough, a lot of this stuff ends up being prophetic. But you notice there's it, it, it's there's specifics to it. First of all, it's got to come true. Ephesians six seventeen and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. That doesn't apply. Um, I've got that one. Okay, spiritual discernment right here. 1 Corinthians 2.14 The natural person does not accept the things of the God, Spirit of God for they are folly to him and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. We have Revelation 22. This one applies too. I want everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. A lot of people try to make that just about the book of Revelation, and that seems to be a way that they're justifying changing stuff or twisting stuff in other parts of the Bible. You know, for the born-again believer who fears God, I just take that statement and apply it to the whole Bible, and I'm not going to add nothing to it. I'm going to read it for what it says and just run, and run with it. But he clearly says, I warn everyone. Not just born again believers or non born again, but you know, believers and unbelievers. He's talking to everybody who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone, anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. So when somebody gives a prophetic word or they make a prophetic statement involving the future timeline and what's coming, and I, I, there for a while back in 2019, the beginning of 2020, a lot of them were doing that trying to add some kind of validation or some kind of authority to what they were saying in their belief of whatever version rapture or whatever version, whatever things that, that everybody was arguing about at that time, salvation and all that. They were saying, I have a prophetic word from the Lord. Boom. And they throw it on there. Okay. Well, two things are going to happen. First of all, I'm going to test that prophetic word. I'm going to see if it matches scripture. And second of all, I'm going to see if it's just something they pulled out of the Bible and didn't come up with outside of that. Now, here, here's a very interesting, interesting thing to note. God will not give somebody something that will step outside of his word. It would have to confirm his word and be confirmed by his word. Two, if they make a statement and it goes outside of scripture and what scripture says, they're now in violation of the office they claim to have. Because anybody who's, who pretends to speak on behalf of God must speak as God leads them to speak, which means they will speak the words of God. Well, first of all, we don't need anybody to do that. We have the word. This is the more sure word. Dreams, visions, none of that stuff is as sure as this. Prophetic words aren't as sure as the Bible. We have the Bible we can rely on. We don't need those things. Now, sometimes God will give those things for encouragement. But again... If somebody presents it as a prophetic statement saying, hey, guys, here's a dream I had. I believe this is going to come true. You've now put yourself on a level of profit. Go see the previous video. You now have put yourself in a place that's very dangerous if it turns out what you said is wrong. And the Bible says, avoid people like that. Don't mess with them. So we got to be careful. What we're going to I can't ever give you a prophetic word. I can't declare that. I can't speak on, on God's behalf in that way. I haven't been deemed a prophet. And, and I don't need to. Everything we need is right here in the Bible. Everything we need is contained within God's word. We don't need another prophetic word. Somebody said one time to me, well, it helps other people who don't understand, understand better what's happening. And I told them, not if it leads them outside of the word of God. Because what you've got is YouTube channels out here that are doing nothing but these prophetic words and they're barely covering scripture. Maybe one verse, maybe two. Sometimes even just half a verse. And the whole video had nothing to do with glorifying God. It was just about their dream or vision. It became about them. Well, now you've got people listening to this, getting their feelings all fired up, and they're getting tied to this as doctrine when they should be in the Bible. Now, somebody cracks open a Bible and they're reading through and they're, they're searching for what these people say and they're like, whoa, wait a minute, that's not in here anywhere. They're not even close. And then the, they listened closely, and this is what I did. I started to hear key statements that these people were making. And I would go to the scripture and I would flip it open and go, oh, they messed up because now they misquoted God. If you're going to represent God, you had better make sure you're doing this to the best of your ability. I don't give you guys anything I haven't researched. Now, sometimes it's I shoot from the hip, but I give you as much scripture as I can to prove the point. 
I give you as much scripture as I can to show where I come from. Most people don't even give, give close to the same amount of scripture I give. In any one video, I give between 10 and 100 scriptures. If I'm doing a video digging into a subject, we can get up three, four, five hundred. 500. I even did one video that was over 600 scriptures. To prove the point, to make sure that we're on the right track. To make sure that we don't have to question in anything. Yet when somebody gives a prophetic word, you don't have to hear any scripture. I would like to hear them give more scripture to prove the case. Like the whole tongues thing, and people are going around talking as gibberish, or they're claiming it's a prayer language, and they take half a verse to prove this, and you can't do that. You need to take a whole verse. I've made a lot of people mad telling them that, but the thing is, they, they need to face the truth. The Holy Spirit is not going to give you a random gibberish language that doesn't mean anything to anybody. And it's certainly not an indicator of, of an indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We've got to deal with biblical fact here. So back to the prophetic word. If somebody gives a prophetic word and, there's, and the biblical facts are fault, faulty in there, well, there's a problem with that prophetic word. Now that person has got to answer for that. Now they've got to explain why they were wrong in their, in their thing. And they won't go back and check it. Where's David, David Coverstone? Has anybody heard from him? I haven't seen anything about him. What happened? He made these massive, got him famous, made him a bunch of money. All of a sudden he disappeared. Oh, well, that's right. Didn't he Didn't he declare Trump was going to be president again? Yeah, he was one of them. But they gloss right over that and just keep on trucking. Whoa, hold on a minute. You back up. We need to address this. And that's the problem I run into with a lot of people who want to debate and why I've almost completely stopped debating people. I still do it every now and then. You guys don't get to see it because it's private debate between me and someone else. But I almost quit doing that because... They would go and they would start their, their point and they would just, like, it was almost like they didn't even start out in first gear. They started out in fifth gear, full throttle, nitrous, blowed engine, like a rocket, and just took off. And it's like, where are you going? You completely lost me. Let's back up to your first statement. Let's discuss your first statement. Then they get mad. Well, I'm not the one that unloaded an entire thesaurus full of information, a whole book, uh, half an encyclopedia of information, and dumped it out on the table and said, here, figure out how to put the puzzle together. The idea of a debate is to discuss each point in turn and come to a conclusion. And I never could get anybody to do that. That one guy emailed me seven times before I ever got to respond to him. And I told him, I was like, no, I said, I can't do this. Let's go back to your first statement. And I wanted to engage in the first statement. He didn't want to talk about that. He sent me another nine, 11 emails. You can't, you can't discuss anything in that way, in that fashion. That's just you talking. Well, that's not going to solve anything. This prophetic word situation, you've got to get it under control. Now, if God gives you a prophetic word, yeah, you got to put that out there. Because that may be there to help somebody. But don't use that as an excuse to say, hey, I have a prophetic word. And then you proceed to tell us something that doesn't match what the Bible says. That one, that one girl I found, teenage girl, I think she was 17 or 18. Yeah, God told me I'm one of the 144,000. Um, no, you're not. Well, you don't know. You, you don't not, you're not qualified to say that. Well, I can read. And it clearly says it's a male virgin of Jewish lineage. And I'm looking at you on your, on your video and you're not of Jewish lineage. And you're not male and you're probably not a virgin. You know, there's a whole criteria thing that has to be met here. Apostles, first video that I did, we have to, there's criteria. Prophet, same thing, criteria. Prophetic word, same thing. There's criteria that must be matched. See, see the video about the prophets. Because if you give something like that, you put yourself in a real dangerous place in God's hands because it is, a, what does the Bible say? It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of a vengeful God. Don't make the mistake of misspeaking and saying it's something prophetic that came from God when it didn't. There's been no need for him to speak in these last 2,000 years. No need. We have the Bible. That's all we need. Does he still do it? Sure. He's God. He does what he wants. But, but I certainly don't want to be the person who presumes to speak on his behalf and ends up speaking something that isn't true or something that doesn't match his word. Whatever you give has got to match the Bible. This is why when I have a dream or vision, I test it. 
If it don't jibe with the scripture in every single point, doesn't you guys don't even hear about it. I think I've told one, maybe two, in the last almost three years. But they weren't for anything prophetic. It was just, this is what I saw. It's really important that we pay attention. Not only the people who are doing this need to pay attention to what they're doing, to make sure they don't put themselves in a bad way with the Lord, because you can do that. But the people who are listening to it, that you're making sure you're testing everything they say. Take notes, write down the scripture verses, go look them up. You start reading through that, five verses above, five verses below, reading it in context, you start realizing, wait a minute, that, what they said doesn't, that doesn't match this at all. Ooh, well, I better quit listening to them. And you know what happens when you do that? Because you're not hurting them none. You know what happens when you do that? You get a clearer understanding and it gives you peace and patience. And you don't walk around angry or frustrated all the time like the other people are. Because they're always angry or frustrated because everything they desperately want to happen never does because it doesn't match God's word. We've got to be careful. We have to be careful. Not only what we're saying, but what we're listening to. Don't add to, the, to God's word. Um, 1 Thessalonians 2.13 and we also thank God constantly for this, that when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it as the word, uh, not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. What's the word of God? This right here. It wasn't anything specific they came out with. It was this. It wasn't just random stuff. It was this. And there's a lot of people that are reading like the Gospel of Thomas. There is no such thing as a Gospel of Thomas. Somebody else wrote that. But people are taking that as gospel truth. Have you ever read it? That's scary. Because that directly contradicts the scripture in almost every point. Yet that's what people are calling truth. Well, I'd hate to see the Jesus that talks about. It talks about a bad Jesus. A Jesus killing people. Yeah. It's crazy. It goes directly opposite to what the true scripture says. So we've got to be careful. We've got to watch out. We've got to be very, very diligent. We have to be careful what we're paying attention to. We have to be careful what we're repeating. The only prophetic word we need is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The only prophetic statement we need is the Lord is fulfilling his prophecy in the world today. And he's been doing it nonstop since the beginning. We need to know what God says. Not what people say. And there are way too many people out there. See, go find six people and contact them by email and ask them, uh, would the Lord, do you think the Lord would give you a prophetic word about this subject? And give them a random subject. And you'll get six completely different prophetic words. That's not God. See, um, in 2020, I think it was 20, early 2020, maybe late 2019, I, I did that to somebody. But it was only two that I, I told them, you know, somebody else gave a prophetic word about this too. It was a big event coming up because, you know, we, all the stuff we were watching for in 2019. I told them, but this person said something different. Who, who can I tell is right? And she proceeded to verbally assault me for not believing her word and questioning her authority. In fact, I was condemned by her words for questioning her authority as a quote-unquote receiver of prophetic word from God. I've had a lot of people try to do that. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Well, your rebuke doesn't work because you don't know how to do it, because you don't read the Bible. If you're wrong, who do you think the rebuke is coming for? You, not me. I'm doing what I'm told to do in the Bible, what he commanded me to do. Prove everything. Take nothing for granted. Prove it. If it doesn't match my word, that's the template. Throw it away. That's what I'm doing. And 2 Timothy 3.16, the very first scripture we started with, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, 
and for training in righteousness. We all need every one of those, but there are people out there who are so desperate to be popular and famous and have people look at them and look up to them and elevate them, and they want to be validated so bad that they end up getting themselves in a situation that does not glorify God. Because if you tell something, something that you say is prophetic and it doesn't come true, you have now brought shame upon Christ. Don't do that. That's dangerous. These warnings are in here for a reason. And this, the more sure word that Peter was talking about, the prophetic word, is this Bible. This is what we need. So before you do that, if, if anybody's watching that does this, before you do that, check it with the scripture first. If it don't match, don't share it. And if you've done that, and you start to find out that there's a lot of stuff you share that doesn't match, repent. Change your mind. Tell the Lord about it. Because you don't want that weighing down on you. Because in the tribulation, the Bible says a lot of people are going to do this stuff. A whole lot of them. And their hearts will be no closer to the Lord than an unbelievers. So that's my video, guys. And that's so far, that's the three videos that I was given in this, for this video series. I just wanted to cover that quickly because we need to be careful. We need to watch out. We need to pay attention. Because if we don't, who's going to? If we don't call this stuff out and tell the truth on it, who's going to? If we don't expose these things like the Bible tells us to, who's going to? A lot of people are being deceived because of this stuff. Somebody's got to say something. That's what we're supposed to do. See you in the next one.